Thank you for being with us on the Feast of St. Peter Canisius. We begin tonight with the war between Hamas and Israel. Negotiations at the United Nations Security Council have hit an impasse. Members will try again tomorrow to agree on a draft resolution to halt the hostilities in an effort to bring more aid to the Gaza Strip. The situation is considered dire. The World Health Organization says northern Gaza has no more functioning hospitals. Workers describe horrific scenes of suffering, patients writhing in pain without medication, a lack of antibiotics for post-operative surgeries, and dead bodies lying on the floor. Hamas and Israeli leaders are in Egypt today for hostage talks and to discuss a possible ceasefire. Here with the latest on the war, he's senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister and former Israeli ambassador to the UK, Mark Regev. Mr. Ambassador, good to be with you today. Uh, tell us, what is the latest with the talks and where do things stand right now? So I don't have a definitive answer for you. I'd like to tell you that all our hostages are coming home. Uh, uh, some 130 people are still in Gaza, held by uh, Hamas, and we want them all home. But I can't put the, car bef the cart before the horses. Uh, we have to wait and see how this develops. We're talking closely to the United States. We're talking to Egypt and to Qatar. But uh, 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 we'd like to see these people come home. But at the moment, it looks tough. Uh, sir, the Biden administration uh, has repeatedly urged Israel to shift from high-intensity operations to more targeted intelligence-driven missions. Uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin also said that he fears of a wider regional war that would subside if that happened. Um, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. So we had good meetings with the uh, 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 Secretary of Defense when he was here earlier in the week. I think we see eye to eye on the overall strategic objectives. Number one, that Israel uh, has the right, in fact, the obligation to act against Hamas to, to protect our, our people. Two, that the new situation has to be created in Gaza, that uh, this terrorist group should never again be allowed to rule over the Gaza Strip, that the people of Gaza deserve a different regime to rule over them. And, and we agree on all that. And of course, we want to see both America and Israel want to see all the hostages released. Uh, we can have d discussions uh, uh, about how to proceed forward on those goals. Uh, we listen very closely to whatever the Americans say to us, and I believe they listen very carefully to what we say to them. But the goals are the destruction of Hamas's military machine, bringing the hostages home, and ending Hamas's rule of terror over the Palestinian population of Gaza. Can you tell us more uh, about the main Hamas military compound uh, that Israel seized and how that may maybe shift the nature of the fighting and possibly the focus of the mission? So at the moment, a lot of people are looking at Khan Yunus, which is in the south of Gaza, where uh, uh, the leadership of Hamas has been stationed. And underneath the city, there is this underground uh, uh, network of subterranean terror uh, uh, structures, uh, tunnels, uh, command centers, uh, arms depots. Uh, we fear some of our hostages uh, could be there as well. And Hamas has built this, as I said, subterranean terror machine underneath civilian neighborhoods. They build them uh, uh, under hospitals, under schools, under UN facilities, under mosques. And our ground forces, who, who are doing bitter close quarter fighting, taking losses, are, are, are slowly but surely breaking up this Hamas military machine. Now, in the north, where we started earlier, in the northern Gaza Strip, uh, we're already seeing uh, the signs of collapse. We're seeing more and more Hamas uh, terrorists uh, voluntarily surrender. And I think uh, in the south, we're going to start to see that soon. It's not the end yet, but maybe this is already the beginning of the end. We have about 90 seconds left or so, sir, but I do want to ask you um, about the Holy Family Church in Gaza. Uh, there are conflicting reports as to what actually happened in the shooting of two women there. Can you provide the latest on what your investigation has uncovered? Um, was this a mistake by the IDF? It could have been, but we don't know that for sure. What we do know is that there was a hostile fire from the immediate vicinity of the church by terrorists, rocket-propelled grenade, 
fired at our, at our forces. There was a firefight between uh, the IDF and Hamas terrorists. And, and apparently and tragically, uh, the two women were caught up in the crossfire and killed. We cannot say definitively yet uh, whether it was Israeli fire or the fire of the terrorists that led to their tragic deaths. I can tell you unequivocally, Israel does not target civilians. Israel does not target churches. And in fact, uh, we have close relations with the, uh, the church leaders in Jerusalem and the different churches in uh, Gaza. We've been trying to coordinate as best we can to keep them out of the line of fire. Well, Mr. Regev, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.